just about ready to go from Rec Hall in another top 10 showdown. Number eight, Wisconsin, and number seven, Penn State, here in State College. Audrey Flaw, Mike Monaco, our entire BTN crew with you, and let's get you the starting lineups powered by American Ethanol. Wisconsin is second in the Big Ten in hitting percentage. Dana Retke is first in the nation in hitting percentage. Yeah, she is six foot eight, and so tonight, we're going to have to see how Penn State chooses to block her. She is an All-American, just a hammer for an arm. So it'll be vital to see the scheme that Penn State uses tonight to try to slow her down. And then, Audrey, Penn State had such a big win yesterday. Johnny Parker obviously was the headliner from that performance. But how good was Brianna Weiskircher as well? Well, I've seen Weiskircher play a lot this season. And I thought last night she was exceptional. Her placement was fantastic. Her choices were bang on and I really liked her backcourt defense as well she kept the ball in play and gave her team an opportunity to transition and score Russ Rose is in his 40th season here in State College and he told his team today before practice no one wants to hear about that quick turnaround that we just talked about he said if you're sore pop a couple Advil let's go <laughs> Yeah, that's typical Russ Rose right there. I love it. And he also mentioned that it's very much like the NCAA tournament playing back-to-back -to -back tough competition. Year number six for Kelly Sheffield in Madison. They got into town before Penn State's match even started last night in Sheffield. He was able to watch that five-set thriller here in this building. A whiteout from Rec Hall. Final night of the Big Ten regular season with Selection Sunday just about 24 hours from now. Mike, I feel the tension in the air right now. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of positive energy here. This whiteout, it looks outstanding here in Rec Hall. Weisskircher's back there getting ready to serve. This is going to be a good one tonight. Penn State's football team had the game earlier today, just on campus. They got the big win over Maryland. Many of those fans here inside Rec Hall. We've got the band here as well. And Brianna Weiskircher begins serving in rotation one for Penn State. Sydney Hilly's back set is to Madison Duello. And the first kill for the redshirt junior from Kansas City, Missouri. Well, Duello, an outstanding right side attacker. Uh, again, we're going to have to see how Penn State plays defense because you can't block and dig them all the same way. So we'll keep an eye on the defense for Penn State and kind of keep you up to date on what subtle changes they're going to make on uh, different hitters for Wisconsin. We're going to keep an eye on the service errors as well because if you remember last night's match, that was such an issue for Minnesota. They had 11 service errors in total, and so many of those came in set one. Jenna Hampton, the freshman DS from Tampa, ready to serve. Bump set from Sydney Hill. Out to Molly Haggerty for the kill. Well, Haggerty has that All-American arm, swings from the left side, gets a nice set, and really just doesn't put all her power behind that one and manages to score, find the court. Richard sophomore from Glen Ellen, Illinois, west of Chicago. She sets out of the back for Grace Lober. Back to Lober. Good start for Wisconsin up 3-1 on the road. You know, what? one of the things Sheffield mentioned is that he's got to get good productivity from his left sides. And right now, they're scoring uh, quite a bit here in the first set. Lots of the kills have come from that left side attack. Out of the middle for Penn State. That's Serena Gray, one of those two freshman middles. She's from the L.A. area, the number five recruit in this year's freshman class. You know, take a look at the pass that is controlled perfectly. Weisskircher does a good job. Her back is to the net as she's setting. She turns, gets her shoulders perpendicular, sets that A beautifully. They served pretty tough yesterday as well for Penn State. Bump set from Jenna Hampton out to Johnny Parker, whose tip is denied by Wisconsin with Loberg and Retke. So Johnny Parker seeing a little different block right now. She's got Retke in front of her. Look at the extension on Retke on the block there. And she tries to lay over a tip, doesn't manage to cross the net. 
Sturger to the middle for Caitlin Hoare. Point goes to Wisconsin off the antenna. Well, real difficult to do anything with this ball. You can see that the ball travels outside of the court past the antenna. So for a right side, right-handed attacker, that's a really difficult ball to deal with. And for as good as Penn State's performance was yesterday, they didn't get off to the best start. They only hit 100 in set one. Parker with the attack error, and again, she had a couple of those early on in the match against Minnesota. Yeah, these are really, in my opinion, setting errors. They're not really going to the correct location along the net. So Parker, she tries to run something fast, so she has to take off and expects the set to be right on target for her to swing. This time, trouble passing, but it doesn't matter for Johnny Parker to collect her first kill. We set it 29 kills yesterday, the most by a Penn State freshman since at least 2001. And afterward, Russ Rose said he thinks the top freshman in the Big Ten, in his opinion. Great job by Kendall White, the junior libero in the All-American. Hilly sets Loberg for a kill. Pretty balanced start for the Badgers, and that was the recipe for them yesterday in that three-set win you mentioned against Rutgers yesterday afternoon. And so far, Duello with a kill, Haggerty with a kill, a couple for Loberg as well. And that 500 hitting percentage early on for the Badgers. On the overpass, a chance for Penn State. Taylor Leith got the swing at the net and gets the point. And it was a question mark how Leith would be heading into this one after last night. Yeah, last night she just kind of um, took a weird step on the ball at, at, in serve-receive and uh, just tweaked her knee a little bit. We thought maybe she would be out for the rest of the match last night, but came back and performed perfectly fine. Madison Duello with the kill for Wisconsin. Yeah, this was last night in set four, and if you take a look, at Taylor Leith, left side of the screen, back left for Penn State. It doesn't appear to be anything that, that really prompted it, but that right leg, and you see there's the sleeve on it tonight. Did participate in practice this morning for Penn State. Parker comes soaring out of the back row for the kill. Well, Penn State runs this so fast. At the point of Weisskircher touching the ball, Parker is taking her first step. So it's a very quick attack, very low set, and you can see that it's super hard to deal with in the backcourt for the Badgers. Kendall White serves. Nice job by Hilly to set up Tiana Williams. Yeah, that's a very deceptive set. Everybody is expecting her to make the easy set, which is going to be to the left side. Watch how Hilly moves across the net. And Williams there makes herself available, finds herself with nearly no block in front of her. Big kill for Williams. And the 12 assists per set this season for Sydney Hilly. Top mark in the Big Ten. And the service error is the second one for the Badgers. What do you think of the way that Hilly's playing right now? Well, right now she, you know, just in this early part of the set is showing that she can set a variety of different things along the net. They use the entire length of the net. It's not just pin, middle, left pin, right pin. As you can see on that last play, she, as she's moving along the net, will set quick tempo behind her. Let's take a look at this one, though. That's what Recky will do. High over top of the block. You have to be able to dig around a block with Recky. Net violation is on Wisconsin. Now let's take a look at the net violation here. Yep, you can see as Hilly comes down off the block, touches the net. Hampton serve and Emmy Dodge steps in. Off the nice dig from Hampton, some good coverage as well. Leith with a tip, dug by Haggerty. Weiskircher sets Parker. And Penn State.
State can't keep it up off the block. And Wisconsin by four. Well, great back and forth action there. Kind of got a feel for what Penn State is going to do against Recky. I noticed that they commit block with her and left Molly Haggerty, the left side attacker, one-on-one. -on -one. We'll see if that continues to be the trend for Penn State and how they're going to defend Dana Recky tonight. Emmy Dodges overpass lands out in the point to Penn State. Now Serena Gray back to serve. Clark with a good pass to Hilly. And that leads to Dana Retke and her second kill. Now let's talk a little bit about Tiffany Clark and a great pass there. Platform right to target, but this high cross court shot deflects off the block for Redke. When you talk about Wisconsin, Tiffany Clark is a name that has really been ascending the last month, two month stretch for this Badgers team. Out of the back row, Redke got the swing. Parker blasts one at Redke. Weiskircher to the middle for Caitlin Horde and a kill for the freshman. We're doing it. Excellent job of letting the bro take the free ball coming over and stepping laterally, getting away from the setter. Elbow high, wrist high, snaps hard to right back. Saw Horde is top five in the conference in hitting percentage. She had 12 kills, hit 346 yesterday against Minnesota. And a big ace serve for Penn State with Johnny Parker. Uh, look at this athleticism. She just lets that ball rip and then right down the line. That is a big start for her as well behind the service line because you often see Gabby Blossom come in to serve for her because of serves like that. She has now 56 service errors this season. High risk, high reward. Yeah. Here's Sydney Hill. Taylor Leith winds up. Grace Loberg. And the block for Penn State. What I really like about Penn State right now, the sub, well, she just subbed out, but Jenna Hampton steps in front of Taylor Leith on serve-receive, so she's feeling tons of confidence in the backcourt on serve-receive and delivers a great pass, so taking a little bit of that serve-receive responsibility off of Leith's shoulders right now. And Leith carries so much of that responsibility in serve-receive for Penn State. Yeah, and she gets picked on, and, you know, sometimes she has good nights and sometimes not so good. So it's nice that other people in this Penn State lineup are stepping up on serve-receive. Well, Tiana Williams loads up, and the senior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, with the kill. Well, you know, this is just picture perfect. Tiana Williams... The speed of her approach is impressive. The elevation is outstanding, and she can demonstrate how to hit a slide like nobody else in the conference. She goes up against Weiskircher at the net. Oberg digs it. Hilly sets. Dwello the kill. Great start for Wisconsin in set one, hitting right around 500 on the road. Wisconsin leads Penn State by four in set one early on. And Audrey, let's break down the impact that Dana Retke has. Yeah, well, when you're defending somebody like Retke, 6'8", middle, you have to choose what you're going to do. Penn State's middle blocker right now goes with her. Stop right there. You see how she is commit blocking to Retke, who's on the right pin. The setter goes to the outside. Molly Haggerty for Wisconsin finds herself one-on-one, -on -one, which gives her a great opportunity to score. And that's why Kelly Sheffield said to us today at practice, our outside hitters have to terminate because they're going to have those opportunities because of Redke's impact. Saw Nia Reed after her first kill. Penn State within three. Haggerty is blocked. Oh, 
Weisskircher does a good job of just going straight up and over and then at the point of contact, reaching back to the middle of the court. You see Penn State swing blocks. They start in the middle of the court, kind of have that swinging motion with their arms. It helps Weisskircher get up on the block. Second service error, this one from Kendall White. And we showed you that Brianna Weiskircher had 63 assists, a career high last night. She also had five blocks, five kills, 15 digs as well. Clark serves. Weiskircher to Nia Reed. And the block there for Wisconsin. Boy, Wisconsin is looking great in this first set. Doing a really good job of closing to the outside. The lateral speed right now by Dana Redke is impressive, and they're reaching four hands over on Nia Reed. Clark goes short. Duello. And the point two, Wisconsin. That net violation by Penn State. Easy points right now that they're giving to Wisconsin. Let's take a look at this again. You're going to see Penn State's middle blocker. Or I'm sorry, that was a left side blocker. Touching the net, so point Wisconsin. Ever so slightly and a timeout for Russ Rose. Inside rec hall, the regular season finale, and so far Wisconsin has looked great in this top 10 matchup. And Audrey, they're hitting 429 with just two hitting errors. Yeah, Penn State hitting 115 right now. And the struggle for Penn State seems to be that the block is very different than what they saw last night. So they need to go high hands. There has to be some seams that they need to rip the ball into. Hitting percentage for Penn State must get better. They've had five attackers against just eight kills so far. Weiskircher to Nia Reed for a kill. And right there, just a different look offensively. That ball was not set all the way to the pin, bringing Nia Reed in. Take a look at the angle of her approach, and she's able to just nail that ball cross court, left back corner of Wisconsin's court. Penn State had success moving Johnny Parker around last night as well. Tip is down for Madison Dwello, who's got five kills on five swings so far. Dwello with great vision on that, knows that the defense is playing her deep and knows that a tip over the block, if it doesn't score, is going to cause a lot of havoc on that dig, but that one hits the floor. Kelly Sheffield said, we're a different team when Madison Dwello is at her best. Retke on the slide for the kill, and that's where Dana Retke is often at her best. Yeah, it's so fast. And, you know, the angles that she's able to hit. This one, take a look at the speed of her approach. Penn State's block not quite there. We see that they're drifting to the pin, which gives her a lot of cross court to hit into. Wisconsin has three different slides, and it's that one where they go wide that is so fast for them. Right, they have the slide that goes directly behind the setter, one that kind of goes between the setter and the pin, kind of in the middle, and then the one all the way to the pin. I think she's good at all of them, but I would say, I agree with you, Mike, the one all the way to the pin is super hard to defend. So Redke and the Badgers up by five here in set one. Come on, let's go. Jenna Hampton's serve is wide. And a third service error in set one from Penn State. We'll take a look at this one again. Trying to go for that deep corner, wide on the serve. When you made this point last night, sometimes you can live with service errors that are like that, more so than some of the ones Minnesota had last night into the net. Right, you know, when you're trying to do something with the ball and you can't quite execute, but the intention was there and it almost executed, you know, you can live with those errors. The one in the middle of the net, you know, as a coach, I can't stand those errors. <laughs> Wisconsin was out of system and it leads to a Johnny Parker kill, her third. And we should mention that number two, Allison Cathy for Penn State, is in the front row for Taylor Leaf. So she has got a big arm, and uh, Penn State really needs her to come through with some swings in this rotation. There's Leaf, the grad transfer who came in from North Carolina. 
Emily Shora in to serve for Penn State. Loberg off the block of Penn State and the point to the Nittany Lions. And what's interesting about Wisconsin, as soon as the setter, Sydney Hilly, is off the net and there's only one option, you can see number 23 for Penn State. Caitlin Horde can release and it's a difficult block to hit around. Shore goes short and Haggerty got to it. And Loberg the kill. That's her third. All right, let's take a look at this again. Take a look at Penn State's block. Committing to Recky. Set goes to the outside. Grace Loberg with the kill. So sometimes it's not all the kills that Recky gets. It's the kills that she's able to set up for her teammates that is so difficult to defend for the opponent. She can't handle that one in the back row and a kill for Caitlin Hoard. And Hoard comes in fast and furious. Very critical side out swing for her. Second kill for Hoard with Penn State within four late in set one. Gabby Blossom into serve. There's Loberg for a kill. We'll take a look at this shot. It goes right to the middle back area of the court, over top of the block. Kendall White seems to be somewhat out of position reading a cross-court shot there when the ball was clearly just going to go deep middle back. And so far, Duello and Loberg have combined for nine kills of the 15 that Wisconsin has. Kelly serves. There's Kathy. You mentioned a big arm for the freshman. The block for Penn State with Caitlin Hoare. A really good looking block from Penn State. Again, swing blocking the middle and the left side going up together in unison. You're going to see middle blocker Caitlin Hoare there sealing that cross court, not allowing that cross court shot to score. You know, it's getting to be that time where you're going to start talking about the awards in this conference. We're going to get into that later. Hort's going to be a part of the discussion of the best freshmen in this conference. And we saw a couple of the headliners yesterday with not just Johnny Parker, Donna Rollins as well. Wisconsin's got set point up by five, and so Russ Rose takes a timeout. Well, so we've talked about Parker's big performance with her 29 kills, and one of the questions will be, how many of the voters, the head coaches, will be maybe prisoners of the moment? That was Kelly Sheffield's term, and how many will look to what Adana Rollins has done playing six rotations all year for Minnesota? Yeah, and what we established was uh, our top eight, and, you know, th there are certainly some other fantastic freshmen in the league, uh, but these ones, I feel, have done an outstanding job for their team and our leaders and they keep getting better as the season goes on. Uh, Johnny Parker has <laughs> just a lethal arm that has really helped her team so uh, she's one of my personal favorites but Rollins boy she's that six rotation player for Minnesota that has done it all for her team this season. The coaches received their ballots on Tuesday they're due tomorrow at noon central time so a little bit of time left for the 14 head coaches in this league to determine their votes for all the awards not just freshman of the year. And right now for Wisconsin, Madison Duello is helping pace this Badgers attack. She's got six kills on just seven swings. Yeah, and she's hitting 7-14 right now. Duello finds herself one-on-one, -on -one, and boy, she's having a heyday with that. Take a look at the variety of shots that she's hitting right now. That hard cross-court shot's working for her so well. And you see her changing it up a little bit, getting set on that left pin and going line. So, boy, she's been a load to deal with right now. Penn State's got to find a way to at least get some touches to slow that ball down. 2.7 kills per set for Duello this season, whereas last year she was below two kills per set. Service error from Grace Loberg. And side out for Penn State, facing set point for Wisconsin.
White goes at Loberg, who passed it well to Hilly. Bump set from White. Clark gets to it. Haggerty. At the net. And the point to the Badgers. Johnny Parker disagrees. She's looking over at Russ Rhodes. Well, Parker's saying there was a touch on that, Coach. Parker's saying touch, 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 but uh, Russ Rose decides he's not going to use a replay on that one. And so Kelly Sheffield's Badgers take set one, 25-20. Closing it out in the first set on the road here in State College. Very good first set for Wisconsin, 25-20 over Penn State here on the road in the regular season finale. And for Penn State, much like last night, a slow start out of the gates. Right, they really need to find someone to help Parker get into um, a rhythm. Uh, but Russ Rose, what he's really good at is figuring out how to defend his opponent. Right now, Wisconsin very impressive offensively. Tiana Williams hitting 400. Duello 714. Red Key 750. So, you know, Russ Rose is going to figure out blocking schemes, how to play backcourt defense around those blocking schemes. They've got to get that hitting percentage for Wisconsin down, and they have to do a better job offensively. The message from Russ Rose to his team at practice today was you can't get too high, you can't get too low, and he meant that after a big win yesterday, but also within sets. You can win sets if you hit like that, and you can also lose sets when you hit something like 400. Yeah, you have to have stamina in these matches. Uh, you know, it's not always going to go your way, so you've got to fight to the bitter end and uh, compete every point matters. So at the outset of set two, Tiffany Clark with Wisconsin's first ace of the night. Again, the target right now, Taylor Leaf. Really well executed serve. And she's frustrated. She knows that uh, she's going to get a lot of action in serve receive. She's got to step up again. Good pass this time to Weiskircher. He pushes it way too far out to Nia Reed. Well, communication error there. Different plays are called, and Nia Reed was doing one thing, and the setter was doing another. That's never um, a good situation. goes at Leith again. This time in sync, Reed from Weiskircher. Now Reed makes up for it. Nice tempo to the outside. And take a look at how she goes high off the top of the hands and nails that ball right down the line. Weiskircher with the serve for Penn State and the ace. Yeah. Molly Haggerty and Grace Loberg for Wisconsin going for the same ball here. And so that's a great serve right in the seam between, between two passers. Jump float just dropped right down from Weiskircher. Duello can't find her target and the point to Penn State. Now look at the range of that set there. She was trying to go high off the hands, just missed her target. Haggerty's pass a little bit tight, and Hilly connects with Renke. <laughs> well, Hilly does a wonderful job of getting up and trying to save the ball. We'll take a look at it again. Jumps, gets her palm under the ball, lays it up for Redke, who just nails that ball. What a cannon for an arm she has. Two stud sophomores for Wisconsin. Couple kills early in this set for Nia Reed. You said find some sources of productivity outside of just Johnny Parker. Yeah, you know, I think the best teams have a balanced offense where multiple kids in the front row are contributing. So we've got Reed doing well right now, but other people have to get involved. Last night, Penn State's middles were very impressive. We really haven't seen them get set that much so far in this match. Yeah, Greg was involved early in set one, and you're right, not a whole lot since then. Here's Parker. Hilly's back set to Retke on the slide, kept up by Hampton. The joust. Free ball sent over, 
and defended well by Wisconsin. Point goes to Penn State on the double contact. A good battle there. Unfortunate ball handling error for Wisconsin. It was a great ball. Ball played back and forth. You can see frustration there by number 19, Emmy Dodge, for Wisconsin. Up here, let's go. Junior Diaz from East Troy, Wisconsin. Hampton serves. Hilly sets Haggerty. Off the overpass, Wisconsin back to Haggerty for the kill. Wow, Haggerty going up with force. Take a look at that set that's inside zone three. Next set all the way out to the pin. So really hard to get into a blocking rhythm when that left side is moving around as a blocker. You've got to keep your eye on where she is at all times and follow her in. A nice set from Weiskircher, but an attack error from Johnny Parker. Five of those seven attack errors belong to Johnny Parker. Taylor Leith with a rocket at Haggerty. And another ball handling error, the double contact on Loeber. Serena Gray serve. Billy's bump set all the way to Loberg with a tip that's down. You know, that's one of the things that setters don't get a lot of credit for. That bump set clear across the court, nice and high in a sweet spot for the left side, Grace Loberg for Wisconsin to do something positive with the ball. So Philly showing just great versatility and range on that bump set. Speaking of trying to get the middles going, there's Caitlin Hoard for Penn State. You know, you're in such a predicament if you're Penn State because the block for Wisconsin is really good in the middle. So I understand that they want to set the pins, but you got to kind of keep them home too. So every once in a while, establishing that middle attack is going to be so important to open things up for the outsides. And 21 kills combined yesterday from Gray and Ford as Deanna Williams out of Wisconsin's middle with another kill. Well, I think what Tiana Williams does exceptionally well is just the speed of her approach. It's so hard to track her down. Hilly's able to set her so fast. Uh, so I love the athleticism that I see in Williams. You know, she was the M1 her first three years, now the M2. So her numbers have really been climbing as this year has gone on, especially in these last two months. Haggerty sets Duello. Madison Duello. Seven kills on nine swings. And Duello does an exceptional job of not just hitting straight down the line, but in the seam between the defenders. Take a look at Penn State's defense there. They run those parallel lines, trying to defend short and deep, but ball too fast for that backcourt uh, defense for Penn State to handle. And that's Sydney Hilly serves. Short and wide. Kelly Sheffield said we've got to establish service pressure and yeah. that was something that really changed for Minnesota as the course of last night went on against Penn State. Williams from the middle this time. A one foot takeoff. Let's take a look at this pass that goes right up. She comes in. That serve-receive pattern, she's on the left side and comes in, like I said before, fast and furious. I love it. Weiskircher out to Reed with a tip. Kept up. And the point to Penn State. Nine-nine nine in set two after Wisconsin took set one, 25-20. White serves. Hilly and Williams can't sink up. And 
the one came through with such a big ace late in the match last night. And she is serving here on a little bit of a run for Penn State to go up by two. Yeah, I think you have to have a lot of confidence in your serve and courage to just go back and hit the serve that the coaching staff wants you to hit. Right now, White's doing a good job, like you said. We'll see if she can continue this run. It's a 3-0 scoring run for the Nittany Lions. White goes at Haggerty. Dwello from the middle. It can move her around as well. Well, you know, Hilly does a great job. She's moving forward, sets a higher second tempo set in the middle of the court, just like a, a two ball there. But it's it's the foot speed of Duello and the versatility that she is able to move and she communicates with her setter, lets her know where she is and finds herself one-on-one -on -one for an easy kill out of the middle. A good pass from Leith led to the swing from Reed. And another. Double contact called on Wisconsin. That's the third one here in set two. Well, you can take a look at that double contact. Yeah, you can see it's pretty easy to spot when that ball kind of spins out of the setter's hands or really anybody that's setting the ball. If it spins too much, double contact. That shot is out from Wisconsin. Well, and I'll probably jinx it, but we also haven't had many controversial calls just yet tonight as <laughs> we did yet. last night, Audrey. Yeah, not yet. Weiskircher serves. Recky for the kill. Super hard to defend that when the ball is passed up to the setter and Recky takes off. She starts her approach actually left front and approaches along the net. So she's hitting what I call an inside slide. Still taking off one foot, but in front of the setter. Parker's tip. But that's the question with Dana Recky, right? How do you defend her? We asked Kelly Sheffield that today. How would you defend her? Well, you serve really, really tough is how you defend her. And then you have to play good defense, backcourt defense. If you expect the ball to always hit you in the kneecap as a backcourt defensive player, you're not going to dig a lot of balls that she sends your way. You've got to be able to play defense with some range. The balls that are hit outside your body, you've got to make an attempt for You've got to get them up. Good serving, and if you go back after Sydney Hilly as well, that can sometimes take Retke out of it. Haggerty is blocked. Penn State up 15-11 in set two. All right, we're going to take a look at this here, a bump set. You can see Penn State's block, knows where it's going. Haggerty has no room to hit. Big block, Penn State. With a whiteout tonight in Rec Hall, Penn State leads Wisconsin by four in set two after the Badgers took set one. These hitting percentages that we talked about in set one, they have sort of flipped in set two with Penn State hitting 308 in this set and Wisconsin down at 100. Bump set from Weiskircher. For the kill for Wisconsin, and we saw before the break, it wasn't the first swing where she was able to get a kill, and it led to a block for Penn State. Right, and that one, boy, she goes up aggressively. There is a big block in front of her, but she powers it through right in between that block. So, you know, a nicely placed shot there by Haggerty. So what Kelly Sheffield said to us, we've got to be able to convert the opportunities when we get them on the pins. Yeah, sometimes when you are one-on-one, -on -one, it's like you can sense that you're one-on-one -on -one and you just kind of want it so bad that you end up hitting it into the blocker's hands. You just kind of lose focus. Let's take a look at this one, though. Nice jump set into the middle. Little gentle tip over the block scores. I like the celebration Penn State has afterwards, and it's always led there by Kendall White. <laughs> as it often is from the junior libero. Gray's got four kills. She went off script for that one. Loberg with a line shot off the mark. So again, we talk about 
the hitting percentages. Now for Wisconsin in this set, nine kills, seven attack errors, hitting 087. Gray serves at Emmy Dodge. Hilly to the dunk. Allison Cathy rises up. Did she get the touch? Yes. Uh, Johnny Parker with a great dig, denying Sydney Hilly that dump. So Parker comes through with a great defensive play. You said Kendall White's typically at the forefront of it. She leads the celebration there with Penn State up by six in set two, 18-12 on Wisconsin. Second set, Penn State up by six on Wisconsin after the Badgers took set one. Hey, Friday on BTN, conference play begins early on the hardwood. Michigan State takes on Rutgers. Iowa hosts Wisconsin, plus Minnesota battles Oklahoma State, not conference matchup there. You don't want to miss a huge night of hoops Friday on BTN and streaming on the Fox Sports app. Here inside Rec Hall, Penn State has put together an impressive second set, trying to bounce back after the Badgers took the first one. Serena Gray still serving on this 3-0 scoring run for Penn State. Hampton with the dig in the back row, and now Kathy's tip, kept up by Retke. Hilly over the top, Parker digs. Hilly to Retke, and a point for Wisconsin. The tempo of the transition attacks is so fast, so it's so impressive. You know, it's a treat to watch this caliber of volleyball. You're seeing number eight, Wisconsin, against number seven, Penn State, and this is exceptional volleyball all around. Retke out of the back row, White takes it. Parker with a line shot and a kill. Well, that's one heck of a shot by Johnny Parker. Looking cross court, turning, swinging down that line. What a great dig right there by White. Take a look at how she extends outside of her body. When we talk about defensive range, that's what it looks like right there. And you said it's so important against Redke, wherever she's hitting from, that you've got to be able to dig sort of outside your body, not just what's coming at the kneecaps. Yeah, exactly. If you can only defend things that are within the width of your body, you're not a very good defensive player. Kendall White displaying there why she's one of the best pros in the conference. You know, she had 27 digs last night against Minnesota. You see her numbers per set this season, top three in the Big Ten. And she also had that save, tracking it down outside the back line. That went viral last night as Allison Cathy gets the kill. Here's this play from last night, Kendall White with her save. Yeah, the foot speed that this young lady has. Take a look at the change of directions and then lay out. And what I love about Penn State is you follow the person running after the ball. You've got to have a teammate right behind you and then she finishes it with a great bump set to that pin and Johnny Parker delivering a huge swing and then we saw that ponytail little, <laughs> I don't know what you call that thing, but you know, she just kind of rotated it around and got her team all fired up. The twirl, the cyclone, the twirl, something like that. The twirl, the cyclone, that. sure. <laughs> it, it caught Russ Rose's attention. He was talking to the team before practice even started today and he said, you know, Kendall White, I saw your play went viral and I saw you had that little ponytail action at the end in celebration. You know, when you have some like her on the team you know it just elevates the level of play because you want to do exactly what she's doing you know it's fun when you're a, a DS and you've got somebody like that to look up to and you're like man that's a great dig hey I'm gonna try and do that too and suddenly everybody is trying to play defense like Kendall White plays defense so kudos to her and great talent for Penn State well her Nittany Lions are up by six here in set two they're the first to 20 after Wisconsin took the first set because the Badgers hit 400. Well, now they're below 150 and it's flipped for Penn State too. Yeah, Penn State doing a much better job of passing. You know, they're not getting aced. Even if the ball isn't a three-point pass, it's at least a two-point pass. And Weisskircher can dish out things if that ball is at the 10-foot line at least. So we're seeing a really good job from Penn State to just kind of forget about the first set and kind of refocus. Uh, Weiss Kircher doing a good job of tracking down balls and putting up hittable balls for her hitters. Allison Cathy serves. 
Tilly sets Williams, and boy, that is so quick, like you've said. Yeah, and you know, Williams tends to go cross court. The ball is over her left shoulder a little bit. But take a look at where she's hitting it from. Lots of area there, cross court to swing into. Uh, she's so fast, you've got to be up and over and at least try to get a touch on the ball just to slow it down. You may not get a stuff block, but try to slow it down by getting a touch. 12 kills combined from Williams and Recky, and only one error between them. Haggerty nearly ran out of space, and the point goes to Penn State. A solid effort here by Wisconsin, but you know, it's one thing to touch a ball on defense, then you have to control where you put it. If it's a hard hit ball, we tend to say just put it up to the 10 foot line and somebody can play that ball. If it's dug off the court, super difficult, obviously, to get a good second contact on it. Madison Duello collects her ninth kill for the Badgers. Duello, Williams, and Redke pacing this Badgers offensive attack. Weiskircher sets Reed. Misfires. You know, if there's one thing about Reed, sometimes I feel like she loses her patience. Every ball, she wants to just hammer it down. And sometimes those kills aren't always available. So maybe, you know, take out a hitter on the other side of the net, force the other team to play defense. And uh, I feel like she just is a one set mind. You know, she just always tries to hammer it down. Weiskircher defended Haggerty well. Second swing for Haggerty. And the point to Penn State, Haggerty doesn't think so. Well, they decide to triple block Haggerty here. Let's take a look at Penn State's block. All three girls up there. Haggerty's calling for a touch. Ball went long, so we'll see if, uh, if the challenge <laughs> goes Wisconsin's way. We always have to laugh at this because <laughs> Kelly Sheffield is using a green card, and he is challenging whether there was a touch on Penn State at the net on the swing from Haggerty. Well, what makes it even more difficult is when you've got the background of the whiteout, everybody in the stands in white shirts. It's hard to even see the ball in the last angle, but let's take a look at this one. This is The word is in from our down official. There is a touch, and Kelly Sheffield's challenge successful. One more look. First of three challenges used by Kelly Sheffield. If we do go to a fifth set, of course, each coach receives another to use. Badgers within three. Pass from Taylor Leaf, and now Gray on the slide. Clark's pancake couldn't save it. Now 
we talk about how critical serve receive is. Pass goes right up to Weiskircher, and then they stretch the block for Wisconsin, setting the slide all the way to that right front pin. So just a great first contact allows them to score on that play. Weiskircher serves short at Dwella. Bump set from Kendall White to Johnny Parker. Loberg sets Duello. Another bump set from White. On the overpass, Weiskircher to the middle. Redke's set. And now Hilly's bump set. Haggerty the kill at the end of one of the best rallies so far tonight. Haggerty, what a smart shot. She sees what's open and goes for it. Great defense there to keep the ball alive. Take a look at this shot. Right in that open area left, between left back and middle back. Johnny Parker couldn't get it for Penn State and Wisconsin's within two. You know, it's a little different look. Again, when you've got number 16 for Wisconsin, Redke standing at 6'8", she takes away angle, and all she has to do is go straight up and over, and suddenly a portion of the net is no longer available for you to swing into. So she's just a nice size as a middle blocker and makes uh, scoring on the pin super difficult. When you talk about Redke's impact blocking as well, we've already talked about her impact offensively as well. She's got six kills, no errors on 13 swings. Yeah, let's take a look at what she brings to the court here. That one foot takeoff in front of the setter, what I like to call the inside slide. And then she runs right pin. Gets tons of touches with that huge range that she has. Long arms at 6'8" really difficult to hit around that kid. And she has teamed up with Tiana Williams. So those two together, 12 kills, one hitting error, and that's on 23 swings. They've been really efficient. Redke in particular leads the country in hitting percentage coming into tonight at 427. And you were talking about her defensive impact too. First in the Big Ten in blocks percent, top 10 in the country in that category as well. Yeah, and some would say that Wisconsin has the two best middles, middle combination in the in the conference for sure. So they do a lot. They're just not one dimensional. Sometimes we see middles that typically are just really good blockers, not so great offensively. I think those two girls can do both things really, really well. So you're saying They're as far as tonight. pairs go across yes. the conference? Yes, yes, yes. 22-20, Badgers trying to wedge their way back into this late in set two. Dwello serve, good pass from White. Gray from the middle, blocked. There is the defensive impact from Wisconsin's middle. I like the way Hilly comes in to help block that ball. So there's absolutely no angle to hit to the right back corner. So Hilly getting involved in the block, well done. Weiskircher to Nia Reed. And a big swing off the block for the kill. And Penn State's by two. Nia Reed shows sometimes you just don't try to avoid the block. Just go hard. And if it's not a well-formed block, it's going to ricochet off of them and score. So beautifully done there by Nia Reed. Eight kills for Reed. And this matchup between two top eight teams. Final night of the regular season here from Rec Hall. Hampton. Kelly pushes it out to Haggerty. Penn State out of system. Kathy. Good coverage from Hampton. Parker. Parker with a shot at Clark. And it's set point on the way for the Nittany Lions. Parker getting heated up here. <laughs> You know, right now she would, you know, prior to that swing, she was hitting negative. Right now she's uh, six kills, six errors. But you can see that she's taking big aggressive swings and this Penn State team needs her to swing well tonight. That was a great step, 
Hilly's back set to Retke. Dug by Hampton down the line. Now Parker. And the point goes to Wisconsin. Parker had cleaned up some of those hitting errors. She has one there, her seventh. Molly Haggerty behind the line for Wisconsin. She has served really tough this season. Kathy. Set two to Penn State. Penn State's passing was so much better in that second set. And you can see just how simple they make it look. Offense runs so well. Fast tempo to the pin. And then a nice wipe off shot there. Kathy coming through big for her team. So Wisconsin took set one. Penn State responds and evens things up after set two. So things now after two sets, Audrey, have, have sort of evened out in the stack categories. Yeah, absolutely. As you look at almost every category, it's pretty even. So really, it's going to be the team that just serves and passes well and can stay in system more often than their opponent that's going to win this one. Both Kelly Sheffield and Russ Rose said that Penn State had better serving pressure that they applied on Wisconsin in set two. And because of that, Wisconsin not as in system as much as they were in set one. Yeah, and when Wisconsin is in system, they are deadly. So it's a critical aspect for all teams. Uh, but, you know, Wisconsin's super good when they've got a lot of firepower along the net. Serena Gray begins set three with the block. Gray just being disciplined, staying home, and actually Hilly setting the ball into her hands on that one. Loberg's pass to Hilly leads to Molly Haggerty collecting the kill. Now it's a super hard thing to train in outside hitters is going once you feel the contact in the blocker's hands and wiping it off it's it's really difficult i've seen a lot of different techniques sometimes holding brooms up there uh you know going after the block that way so uh, really difficult to train but when you can do it as an outside hitter boy you are very valuable to your team johnny parker with the kill to begin set three and penn state up by one Johnny Parker had 68 swings yesterday. One of the first questions she got asked after the match was, can you even lift your right arm right now? And Brianna Weiskircher had the crack that it's probably, she, she's feeling some soreness because they were pushing her in the celebration after more so than all the swings. That's right. Roll shot is down for Molly Haggerty on the tip. She's showing why she's one of the best outside hitters in the conference. A great little touch shot on that ball. Beautiful hand-to-ball contact. A little top spin on it. Leads pass and leads swing. Recky. Here's Parker. Hilly's bump set. Loberg with the left hand. Kept up. Parker again. Blocked. Well, the shot that worked for Parker last night was that cross-court shot. But when you've got, again, Red Key in front of you and she's the middle blocker, she is not going to allow you to hit that cross-court shot. So right now, Parker has got to go line or off the blocker's hands, but that cross-court shot's not available. Red Key with an easy one. Yeah, Russ Rose said to his team today, if you're lining up against a Duello red key block combination, you got to make a choice and go elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, you've, you've got to choose, uh, you know, a better shot or find a way to do something other than just hit low seam. Uh, for somebody to play the ball, a tip over the block has been working. So, you know, it's up to the setter, though, trying to get the hitters one-on-one. -on -one. Easier said than done, though. Weiskircher does a nice job to find Serena Gray. Weiskircher makes it look so simple here. This is a really difficult thing to do. It takes a lot of forearm strength and just the perfect positioning of your hand on the ball as you're jump setting, attempting to jump set, but saving that ball with one hand, so difficult. She lays it up perfectly for the A. Wisconsin has some trouble with the pass. Out of system, it's a red key kill anyway. It's always nice when you have somebody like Red Key just bumps it behind you. In this 
difficult situation. You do want to set the closest hitter. A behind your back bump set works for Hilly. Redke just cleaning that up. What a great shot. Five players with at least five kills. And that was the recipe yesterday in a three-set win against Rutgers. And that balance has held true to form tonight as well against Penn State. Lobert. Lobert, that's her sixth kill of the night. She's currently at 143, so nice kill by her. Dana Recky yeah. goes with the short serve for the ace. Yeah, that's a super serve from her. High point of contact. That ball goes right over the net, that float. And you can see just how difficult it is. It's going right between two passers. Got to communicate really well on that one. Kelly Sheffield told us just after that second set, we got to change planes some more with our serves. Williams on the slide with the hitting air. Yeah, I think, you know, if you always serve deep, 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 the passers get into a rhythm. I think it's super important to change up your serve. And different people on your team can do different things well. So to understand who has a certain serve and, and you know, calling the zone that they're able to hit. So I think it's really good when you've got a variety of kids, a variety of different serves that different kids can do. You know, uh, Johnny Parker with the jump serve over there, you know, typically difficult to handle if she can get it in. So I think it's a real advantage when you have that. Point to Penn State with the block out. Yeah, that was another service error from Johnny Parker. And we've seen throughout the season, Gabby Blossom will get the chance sometime if Parker is struggling to keep that serve in. Leaf. Good serve at Haggerty. Weiskircher sets the array. Dwello. And another attack error for Wisconsin. Dwello takes full responsibility. She looked at her setter and said, that's me. That's my error there. Great set. And as a setter, you got to love when you get that feedback. You know, hey, it was a perfect set. Give me that set again, and I'll do something better with the ball. It takes a lot of confidence for a hitter to understand, hey, that was my error. Give me the same ball, and I'll score for you next time. And what does that do for you as a setter, especially maybe as an underclassman as well, like Hilly? Well, first of all, it makes you understand that that hitter is still in the game, that you don't have to worry about her being psychologically soft, mm -hmm. that she wants the next ball. And I think as a setter, that's what you want. You want hitters that want the ball. And when they look you in the eye and say, give me the next one, and then they deliver on that, you know, you, you got to just love it. So Hilly really appreciating that feedback that she gets from her attacker. Wisconsin by three. Point goes to Wisconsin, double contact. And Weiskircher doesn't think so with the up official. Well, let's take a look at it. She's moving back, a difficult set to make. We'll see if there's spin on the ball here. A little bit. I wouldn't say it was a, a, a real blatant double. Yeah, you can get away with that one, I think. Caitlin Horde with an answer right back for the Nittany Lions. We've got NCAA seeding at stake, depending on the outcome of this match. A couple teams in the top eight in the polls with great RPIs as well. There's Duello for Wisconsin again. There's just a lot at stake with this one on the final night of the regular season. You're absolutely right. And I think the other thing, you know, you talk about the tournament, but I really feel like this is a confidence booster to whomever wins. And I think, you know, what you do in the heat of the battle, you know, it, you build on that, and I think that growth is so important as you go into the tournament. Coming up on Selection Sunday tomorrow, kept up by Hilly. And the point to Penn State. Wisconsin's bench looking for an explanation. It was in the late call. Down official is explaining that 
what he saw was the ball was down. There's a pancake attempt on the ball. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, yeah that ball's down. Yeah, I think it's a great call by the down official. And he was calling it as soon as it happened, and it took a while for the uh, up official to see his call. On the overpass, Nia Reed for Penn State. Penn State turning it on with their serve, aggressively going after some people there for Wisconsin. And that's how you're going to get back into this one. You gotta serve tough, put pressure on the passers, play good defense, block and dig for a point. Weiskircher, one of the very good servers for Penn State. Reed's tip. And the net violation call. So Penn State not getting a stuff block on Redkey, but getting a touch, slowing the ball down, making it a little bit more uh, doable in terms of being able to play defense around it, getting a touch on it in the back court. If the balls aren't getting touched by the block in the front court, it makes it super hard. Off the tape for the acer. Those are such frustrating serves to deal with. The ones that touch the top of the net, net trickle over. Typically, if somebody is short along the net, they should be making a move after that ball. You know, just a lucky serve there by Penn State. And so now Weiskircher has two of Penn State's three aces. Wisconsin in system to Dwella. A super play there. They run. Red key on a slide, Duello comes around for a high middle set, and you can see Parker for uh, Penn State tries to make an attempt to cover in the middle and block the ball, but really makes uh, no touch on it whatsoever. Well, you saw on the replay, Serena Gray going out to the left side because of Red key on that slide. Kendall White. Point two is. We're back in State College. We apologize for the technical difficulties. We're in set three, and we're going back and forth with Penn State and Wisconsin. And that hitting error has Wisconsin up by three, and the first to 15 with this match tied a set apiece. A frustration error is starting to set in for Penn State. Kelly Sheffield's Badgers team up by three in set three. Midway through set three, Wisconsin is up by three on Penn State in this top 10 showdown in State College. Audrey Flom, Mike Monaco, our entire BTN crew with you as Molly Haggerty commits the service error. And that's the fifth one for Wisconsin. behind the service line. Here's Loberg's tip. Bump set from Hampton. Johnny Parker, and a block for Wisconsin. Well, for as good as Parker was last night, really struggling against this bigger block, not hitting high, you can see how low that ball is, right into the hands of the block, so you know, the challenge for her, can she elevate her level of play to help her team? What do you do against a bigger block like that to try to counteract it? Well, I think other people have got to start working offensively, and I think the set selection from Weisskircher, she's got to start working some other people into it. Middles are doing well. They're hitting well right now, so opening up some angles for Johnny Parker would be key. 
A Russ Rose timeout with Wisconsin ahead by four. Tonight's State Farm State of Success, Madison Duello and Nia Reed, both with a dozen kills for their respective teams. Yeah, they are the workhorses out there right now for their teams and, and just getting big kill numbers right now, high hitting percentage. And what I like is that both of these hitters have low errors. So if the kill isn't there, they're not airing themselves into a point for the other team. And that's a sign of a very good experienced attacker. A fourth year junior in Madison Duello, a fifth year senior in Nia Reed for their teams. 17-13 Wisconsin in set three. Weiskircher to Allison Cathy. This weekend she has closed out some sets with big swings and she gets this one through the block. I like her fight. Gets blocked on the first one and I always like to see what do outside hitters do when they get blocked and it gets recovered by their defense. Do they go up, do they tip roll? She blasts the second one just as hard as she did the first time. So really smart, aggressive hit there by Kathy. She started some earlier in the season when Nia Reed was out with that foot injury. Back set. Kathy again. Haggerty out of the back row for the kill. Not something you see a ton from Wisconsin with back row attacks, but Haggerty's successful. Yeah, Emmy Dodge, great defensive play to keep that ball alive. Aggressively goes after the tip, and then, you know, what I like is Haggerty sees what the block is taking away and sees what she's got in terms of a shot and just nails that ball to that deep left back corner. He kills seven digs for Haggerty. Clark kept it up. Wisconsin up by four. Kathy. Haggerty has to backtrack. Here's the free ball from Lobert. Weitzkircher, Kathy, again. Gotta love the jump set by Weitzkircher to hold the block. Big approach from the middle, helps hold that block. You see it right here. See Tiana Williams for Wisconsin sidestepping but not closing the block, which opens up those critical angles for the outside. Three kills last night for Allison Kathy. Three hitting errors as well. You see five kills without an error on 14 swings so far for the true freshman. Billy left it for Lober. Dwell up. Big kill down the line at Blossom. <laughs> Wow, that is a load to deal with right there. Let's take a look at how hard she works to get off the net. I love how she plants that left foot parallel to the center line and uses her body in the motion as she's swinging through the ball as she goes down the line with it. So Duello's got Wisconsin up by four. You just got a glimpse of Danielle Hart as well. The redshirt freshman from Virginia Beach checks in in the front row for the Badgers. And Hart can't get to it off the swing from Hort. Are you going to see why it's so important <laughs> drop off blockers you've got to be aggressive and go after the ball I feel like you know you're down low ready to dig and then you've got to take two or three steps after the ball you just can't let balls drop around you Haggerty back in for Wisconsin Williams tried to go at a sharp angle and she does get the point for the Badger but you can see the variety of back sets that Wisconsin uses not always all the way to the pin, sometimes between where the setter is and the pin, that little gap set, and then directly behind. And I think what makes it so hard is, you know, you really don't know where to, to set your block as that pin blocker. So with Wisconsin by four, Clark serves short. Parker comes out of the back row. Weiskircher wide. Frustration errors again. You want to just put the ball in play, not do anything necessarily fancy, maybe deep corner. Just whacking that ball wide cross court, not smart by Wise Kircher. Penn State takes its second time out of set three.
So as we go back and forth in set three, we take a step back as well and, and focus in on some of the national picture, certainly with the teams at the top by RPI and kind of where things are at the outset of this week and, and now after some of the results as well. Of course, Minnesota lost last night here. They did win today with a sweep. BYU had the loss earlier this week. These are the top six teams in the RPI ranking as of Monday. Right, so I think Minnesota, even despite the loss, the body of work... <laughs> from them this season has been incredible. So I think they're in Stanford, uh, definitely in uh, Texas, lots of good wins there. Illinois, I feel like, just pushes BYU and Wisconsin on the periphery a little bit. So I really do think the top four uh, will be Stanford, Minnesota, Texas, Illinois. Illinois, by the way, did pick up a win tonight as well in four sets at home in Huff Hall against a very good Purdue team under Dave Shondell. And Illinois right now, they've won 13 in a row. They've been rolling. Yeah, that is a great team, really senior heavy type team. So they play with a ton of confidence. And when they find themselves in difficult situations, they rely on each other, trust each other, and they work their way out of those difficult situations. So I look for Illinois to go pretty deep in that tournament. I think they're a super team. Let's see what happens with BYU as well, because despite that upset loss at the hands of Loyola Marymount earlier this week, they're the only team this year that has beaten Stanford. They've played really well this season. So out of the timeout, Wisconsin by five in set three with the match tied at a set apiece. Doug. Hilly got to it. After that, Penn State prevails over Danielle Hart. Well, Hart's in there for a bigger block, but what she's doing is she's not able to uh, convert on some of these ugly plays. Ball tight, not quite sure what to do with it. She missed uh, the dig. Uh, so we'll, we'll take a look and see if she remains in on that play. Kelly Sheffield, in the meantime, will use a green card. So Kelly Sheffield perhaps suspects that Penn State had a net fall. All right, let's take a look and see if we see the net shaking at all after the block comes down. So the ball never crossed the plane of the net. touch the net, but the, the ball doesn't cross the plane of the net. Another look from this angle. So I think in this situation, you have to look at what happened first. The ball does not cross the plane of the net. And so if the blockers touch the net after that, then it's a mute point. And the point stays with Penn State. The call is confirmed. Yeah, the ball got pushed into the net. Um, so it was a good attempt by Sheffield. <laughs> Forefront for Penn State. Kelly Sheffield just went over. Get a little bit more of an explanation. And his badger is up by four. Hilly. Set Retke, but the point to Penn State in the middle again. Well, this is exactly where Penn State has to just put the foot on the pedal. Serve aggressively. You see the 31 gets set. Tip goes right into the block. Penn State getting a point with their great blocking and defense. Tough serve that Haggerty. Dwella with that wrist away shot. That's why. Two hitting errors.
Rogers, two easy points. Timeout <laughs> by Kelly Sheffield. You can see that one coming. Penn State on a 3-0 scoring run to get back within two. Penn State on the comeback trail. Late in set three. Now down by just two to Wisconsin. Weiskircher serving. Just skipped off the tape. Hilly to the middle for Retke. Wisconsin this time keeps it up off the block. Outside Reed for the kill. Penn State within one. The fans in this place love it. Celebrating that huge swing by Nia Reed. Penn State aggressive on the serve. Clawing their way back into this third set. 13 kills for Reed. She's hitting 417 for the match. She goes with the tip over the top. Hilly digs it. Duello, cross court. And the net violation gives the point to Wisconsin. Duello's hand to ball contact so good, and then her snap is so fast. So Duello coming through for that big point for her team. Kelly Sheffield says she's everything you would want in a fourth year player, but an untimely service error. You know, it's so interesting. Wisconsin had a nice, comfortable lead, and then you saw momentum change because of a couple of bad errors, hitting errors, two in a row. And just like that, Penn State then serving aggressively right back into this third set. Now a chance to tie things up with Hampton serving. with a good pass to Hilly. Now Haggerty. Bump set from Hampton. Here's Kathy. Off the down ball. Recky on the slot. Kathy again through the block. How big has she been in this set? Well, she's been huge, and the biggest play she made was getting a touch off of Redkey's slide attack, slowing the ball down, allowing her team to make a defensive play, and then following it up with a big swing to score. Penn State has trailed multiple times in this set by as many as four, and they have come back to even it up. Yeah, you know, we talk about it a lot. You know, as a blocker, of course you want to get the big stuff block, but sometimes getting positive touches on the ball to where your backcourt defense can play it up nicely and then your setter is running in system plays. Boy, that is huge. So right now, you know, the blocking scheme for Penn State is kind of tuned in to what Wisconsin is doing and they're setting up and playing it perfectly. Well, we are inside this Penn State huddle. You see Kendall White in the middle of that as you often do, leading her team wherever she is on this floor. Yeah, she, you know, if I could have played with anybody, I would have loved to have played with this young lady. Take a look at the energy. Even when she's off the court, she is leading the cheer. And as soon as she comes up, like her mouth never stops. She's always talking. And that is a great thing. That's exactly what you want from your bro. She takes ownership of the backcourt, and she takes ownership of this team. Russ Rose loves her, and so do I. And that's pretty tame by her standards as well for what you <laughs> often get from her around the court. She says she chugs a Red Bull before every match. That is her secret to success and constant energy. Yeah, you know, she seeks out those challenges in life. She loves roller coasters. She says karate is therapeutic for her. She loves paintball. And Russ Rose says we're a good match for each other. And at times he doesn't have enough rope to rope her back in. So just a huge personality on the floor for Penn State. 22 all. Dodges pass to Hilly. And then Haggerty for the point for the Badgers. It seems like whenever Wisconsin needs a point, Haggerty comes through with a crafty shot. That time wiping it off of Penn State's block for a point. Well, she's made a lot of crafty and smart plays. She served that white, and then Allison Kathy once again for Penn State. Penn State. Serena Gray is serving it 
It was a tough serve, and you see Kendall White moving to her left and keeping that angle of her platform open to the setter, so delivering a good pass. And then Kathy showing what she can do, wiping the ball off the block. You know, we were talking freshman earlier, Kathy, not a starter on this Penn State team, but a part of this big and highly touted freshman class. She's out of New Albany, Indiana, down near the Kentucky border. Gray serves on the overpass. Kathy, tip. Loberg, and it's dug by Hampton. Clark lays out. Dodge steps in. Hilly out to Loberg with a rocket at Serena Gray. Outstanding defensive effort on both sides of the net, but what we see the Badgers do that is a well-executed play. They run that slide behind. One-on-one -on, -one on the left side scores. Kathy on set point for Wisconsin. Here's Williams. Kathy right near the net. The joust kept up by Weiskircher. Dug by Dodge. Out to Lober. Parker and Weiskircher collide. Another swing for Kathy and the set to Wisconsin. T. Williams, the senior middle blocker. Critical point there, getting this third set with a huge block in the middle. Penn State battled and fought back from a four-point deficit, but Wisconsin with the block to close out set three on the road in State College. On set point, it was the block for Wisconsin that led to the set three win, but before that, it's Dana Redke's impact again that frees up Lober. Yeah, so Lober gets the kill on this play, but she should thank two people. One, her setter, but also Dana Redke for bringing that block with her as she goes for the slide attack. So as an outside hitter, when you're as talented as Grace Loberg and you find yourself in system, a nice low fast set coming your way, and one blocker in front of you, Boy, it's easy to score on that. So great set by Sydney Hilly, but also Red Key. Boy, she's drawing a lot of attention her way. And she has to. You have to defend it that way. That's what Russ Rose said to us when we chatted with him after the second set. Yeah, you have to make a decision. What are you trying to take away and what are you willing to give? And so if you're going to go one-on-one, -on -one, then you're relying on your backcourt defense to make a play on that ball. Is it a difficult play? Yes. But does Russ Rose think he's got the guns to do it? Yes, he's got some of the best defensive players back there. So when they're one on, when the block is one on one against her, you know you've got to turn it on and get low to the ground, get ready to dig balls. Service error begins. Set four from Wisconsin. Serena Gray begins the set serving. Loberg trouble with the pass. Dug by Hampton. Here's Parker. Haggerty had to reach up for it. Parker to the corner. Parker doing a good job of making something out of nothing. Here you see that she doesn't get a great approach, but she jumped basically jump sets and pushes the ball to that deep corner. A setter and a hitter in her <laughs> pass before she arrived here at Rec Hall. Darn good setter, I might add. You know, even just watching her in practice when she's ever in a scenario like that, she is fun to watch with those hands. Big kill from Duello, that's number 15. She leads all players. We'll take a look at Duello, just real calm back there, waiting for that set. Hits that deep cross-court corner, so Penn State really needs to adjust on her, follow the angle of her approach. Caitlin Horde with the kill from the middle. 12 kills now combined with Gray and Horde. 
They're both at 500 or better and only one error between them. Parker takes them off on this serve. Retke off the slide attack. Retke not allowing Penn State's defense to play that ball as she takes the slide and wipes it off the blocker's hand. You can see Penn State's block, swing blocking. Penn State's middles, like you said, are both hitting 500. We'll see if Weisskircher decides to set the middle a little bit more often. Kathy gets the point. State has been riding Allison Kathy. Wondered how much we would see Taylor Lee today, and Kathy has stepped in and done a nice job. Down the line with a shot from Lober, and the point to Penn State. We see Lober on a one on one situation. She was trying to go line, just turned it a little bit too far. An error results in a point for Penn State. Kathy. <laughs> Nia Reed. 14 kills, she leads Penn State. I love that transition swing. So you see Weiskircher moving along the net. You see first tempo go up, second tempo right off the middles approach there. Set is inside the court, Don't well worry. executed by Penn State. A serve from Allison Cathy. What a positive impact Cathy has had. Not only big swings, but look at that ace there. Her first ace of her college career in Penn State's up by five. Seven two Penn State in this fourth set with Wisconsin up two sets to one and Allison Cathy off her first collegiate ace serving again. And side out from Wisconsin with Grace Loberg. Loberg finds herself again one on one with Penn State's block. Last time she tried to go line, miss this time, drops thumb, goes hard cross court. Kathy exits Taylor Leaf with the sleeve on her right knee into the back row. Led to a bump set and a swing for Reed. Williams on the slide is blocked. There you see that freak athleticism by Caitlin Horde. Gets out there so fast, that lateral speed. Reaches back to the middle of the court and there you see the cheerleader on the floor there, Kendall White. <laughs> Kaitlyn Hoard, six foot four. Nia Reed calls her a string beat on that front line for Penn State. Parker, different look that time going cross court. Serious angle, what a shot. Approach from the back court. Looks cross court. That's a perimeter shot that's hard to defend, so good job. Parker's working her way out of, uh, out of not a, such a great hitting night she's having tonight. Yeah, still hitting negative with the 10 attackers, but up to nine kills. Weiskircher sets Reed. Got a big swing on the left side for Nia Reed, and Penn State's up by seven. So Penn State rotated, I think one or two rotations, so Reed is really getting the opportunity to hit the ball over Hilly a little bit more often. She's taking that ball, going high with it, forcing the ball out of bounds. White served it at Dodge. Reed on that left side with a block this time. Take a look at that. You have to beat the hitter at the point of attack if you're going to be a successful blocker blocking the slide. Mia Reed shows how to do it perfectly there. And a timeout, Kelly Sheffield. 
Penn State with an excellent start to set number four and Nia Reed helping out the Nittany Lions. Final day of the Big Ten regular season. Both these teams at 14 and five in conference play coming into this finale. Tied for third in the conference behind the likes of Minnesota and Illinois. 11-3 Penn State to begin set four. Yeah, right now they're hitting 667 Wisconsin. Three kills, three errors. That's a kill yeah. for Grace Lober. Well, that's exactly what you want out of a timeout. You want to you know, get your crew going, have a play, focus on a good pass, and get a quick point with a good side out swing. So down 11 3. They take the timeout, get the kill. And now Hilly serving. Gray on the slot. You know, it's incredible to think of all the freshman talent on the floor for Penn State, and then you see the freshmen do something like this. Wow, the speed, the swing, just so impressive. And Russ Rose went back, watched the film from yesterday, and realized that at some points they had five freshmen on the floor last night surrounding Brianna Weisgerd. But right now the freshmen have to deal with that bomb. Madison Duello, wow, what an, just a great attack from the left pin. Heavy arm. 16 kills now for Duello. Reed trying to go back and forth. That one sent sky high off the dig. Duello again, and this one goes out. And the point to Wisconsin. One of the more difficult moves to make defensively to try not to do is swivel your hips as you're digging the ball. You know, when you do that, the ball tends to sail off your arms, out, you know, to the stands, to the bleachers. So you really want to maintain strong hips and keep that platform to the middle of the court. Passing trouble for Penn State and Taylor Lee and Wisconsin working their way back into this. Yeah, they work their way back into it by serving tough. You've got to serve aggressively when you're down. And you have to have faith and confidence in, in your best serve. And at a critical moment, you've got to make sure that that tough serve that you have goes in. First ace for Loberg. Wisconsin has four. And she goes at Leith again. Reed with a changeup. And the point goes to Penn State on the double contact. That quells the 3 0 run from the Badgers. Well, let's take a look here. You have the double contact. You can see ball spinning, and you see. Russ Rose's son on the bench, jumping up, calling for that double contact. Yeah, Chris knew it. Yeah. Hannah Hampton came back in with Allison Cathy. Uh, Hampton surf, big swing from Duello in the overpass from Weiskircher. Duello again, cross court. Another kill, building on that career high. She's up to 18. Yeah, she's tough to defend. Weiskircher makes a great dig on the first attack and then does exactly what I mentioned, swivels outside of her body. You can see how her hips rotate outside of the court as opposed to keeping your hips and facing the big part of the court there, not the sideline. Nice shot again from Haggerty, crafty on that left side. Yeah, she just has such range, just a lot of different shots. Let's see how she manages to get the kill on this one. Goes up hard, thumb down inside that middle blocker's left hand. And a double figures for Molly Haggerty joining Dwella. White steps in, a good pass to Weiskircher. Gray, a little bit out of sync with Weiskircher. Penn State gets the kill anyway. Now, oftentimes, as a defensive unit, you think the ball is going to get hit hard, so you're back on your heels, ready for it. Those off-speed shots often score. Two middles for Penn State. Ford and Gray have combined to hit 565 today. 
swing for Dwello. She's up to 19 kills now. Yeah, Dwello is unstoppable. 18 kills, five errors, hitting 500. Kathy, cross court, what power on that one. Well, Weiskircher does such a great job of pushing that ball all the way outside, fast tempo. Take a look at the delivery, and then that deep shot. Kathy, another freshman for Penn State. Service error from Johnny Parker. You know, one of the things you need Parker in there for her offense, so if she can clean up her service game a little bit, you know, I think Russ Rose will have a lot of confidence in her getting attacks in the backcourt, but if you make a bunch of errors on the serve, tough thing for a coach to handle. Well, as far as hitting goes, Allison Cathy only has one error, and she's yeah. got 10 kills. Yeah. You know, she has been asked to step in as the left side, of course, for Taylor Leith, who has been doing a remarkable job all season. So when you get the nod and you can perform like that, kudos to you. Allison Cathy's doing a great job for the team. Can't slow down Dana Retke there. And so Leith comes back in for Cathy in the back row. Radke with a dig in the back. And another one. Hilly steps in. Long from Lober. You know, that was uh, an error by Wisconsin, but when you think about how good Wisconsin's hitters have been, you, you have to be reminded this is against the number one blocking team in the conference. So, you know, you talk about Dwello's hitting percentage, Recky's hitting percentage. You know, it's incredible because they're going against great blockers. They're making good blockers look like they're not so good right now. And after that kill, I mean, this hitting percentage for Wisconsin right around 270. You'll take that against a team that not only leads the Big Ten in blocks per set, top ten in the country. Absolutely. They're doing a good job of wiping off the block, using the edges of the hands to get points. Eight kills for Tiana Williams. Haggerty finds Hilly, leaves it for Dwello. Great from the middle, Weiskircher with the tap down for her first kill. Good little heads up play there by Weiskircher to get a point. You see Wisconsin getting some good positive touches on the ball. They're playing defense off these touched balls, but sometimes when those balls are just lingering around the net, it's easy to get a point as Weiskircher showed on that last play. Chicago area fifth year senior. Zuello hitting error in the point to Penn State. Up by six in set four. And despite that, still hitting for 48 tonight. Had to go with a back set to her double contact call. Let's take a look at this. You see the ball takes an odd spin out of her hand, so good call by the official. Aggardine service. Feeding Duello on the left side. Three. Long. Let's take a look at this swing. You see Reed coming inside the court. Really trying to go for that deep cross-court shot out by inches. On the right side, Loberg takes it. Weiskircher all the way out to Nia Reed for the kill. Well, Reed with a big hammer, but Weiskircher with a beautiful set from sideline to sideline. Take a look at the strength 
Wow, that's impressive. The strength Jeez. from Weiskircher yeah. and then the arm speed from Reed. <laughs> it's great volleyball. It really is. 333 hitting percentage for Reed to go along with those 16 kills. Hampton serves. Penn State up by seven. It forces Clark to the corner and an ace serve. Penn State has this wonderful looking cross court serve between two people, forces Haggerty to have to communicate with her bro, Tiffany Clark. So great serve, great placement. Dwello. Off the dig from White. Hilly sets Dwello again across court wide, and Penn State is up by nine. Dwello starting to make some odd errors. They do give Wisconsin the point on the call, though. I believe it might have been on Kathy. Okay. A touch on the net. Yeah, Kathy, Kathy I think right in the net. And here's Kathy on the swing. Penn State wanted the call. Wisconsin gets the point. Well, my friend there, Kendall White, I, I, I would be having the exact same reaction she's having right now. That ball had a ton of spin. Weiskircher goes over, has a little chit chat with the official. Penn State had a tough call, go against it on a double contact against Weiskircher earlier. And then this one not to their benefit either. Wisconsin within six. Redke from the middle. And a net violation call. Point Badgers. See the net there, forearms touching the net. And so Russ Rose takes his first time out of set four. Well, Penn State has this five point lead in set four, and as we've talked about, Allison Kathy has had to step in and play a bigger role tonight. She's got 10 kills, hitting 310, Audrey. Yeah, there's not much more you can ask of this young lady. She's doing exactly what Russ Rose wants her to do, taking big, aggressive swings at the ball, getting points at critical times, and really doing a, a decent job of changing up her shots as well, but a heavy arm, a big arm from this young lady, Allison Kathy, just a freshman for Penn State. She was the number 71 recruit in the country, at one point committed to Western Kentucky. She committed late to Penn State back in mid-January and said that Penn State was her dream school since the age of 12, and she has performed on a big stage tonight for the Nittany Lions. Hey, tomorrow on BTN, the Lady Lions hit the hardwood. They take on Stony Brook. The action tips off tomorrow to Eastern, right here on BTN and the Fox Sports app, and a chance to watch Tanaya Page in action, one of the best guards in the conference in all Big Ten. First team selection for a Lady Lions team playing good basketball right now under Coquise Washington. So out of Russ Rose's timeout, we'll see what Wisconsin can do. Trying to cut into this deficit, they've got it down to five. Yeah, and you know, sometimes the, the, the game within the game is that serve pass, and as a result, the hitting percentage. In this fourth set, Penn State, 12 kills, one error, hitting 423. Wisconsin, 14 kills, five errors, 281. So 281, a decent hitting percentage. But when you look at that compared to what Penn State is doing, obviously Penn State's ahead here. Clark serves toward the sideline. Kathy blocks. Daniel Retke in the middle. Well, this conference will teach hitters a lot if you're receptive and open to learning. And that time, Kathy gets schooled on the block. A not-so-perfect set. She swings hard right into the belly of the block. 
So over time, she will learn what to do in those situations to put her team in a better position to get that point. The point may not come quickly on a kill. You may have to block and dig, defend, transition attack. So you have to be patient. And then the serve off the tape from Clark and a sky-high dig. Now Haggerty. Weiskircher, back set to Johnny Parker for the kill. All right, look at this aggressive get for White. And Parker finds herself in a good situation to score. Late forming block. Kendall White giving instructions. <laughs> She's going to make a great coach one day. <laughs> Junior from Zionsville, Indiana, about a half hour outside of Indianapolis. Emily Shora in to serve. As Serena Gray checked out. Shora got a piece of it. Now the bump set from Hampton. Down ball from Kathy. She's got dance moves. <laughs> She's celebrating that great block by Caitlin Horde. Horde got the better of Retke and now set point for Penn State. Trying to force a fifth set. Kill from Duello, number 22 tonight, hitting above 430. Hilly just feeding the beast. You just got to know who's hot. Any given night for the Badgers, it can be a different player. Hilly keeping track of hitting percentage, going with her hot hitters. Second set point for Penn State. Kathy from a tough angle. Haggerty. Bump set from Hampton. Kathy puts it away. She continues to cap sets this weekend. <laughs> she absolutely does, and she puts it in the throat of Grace Loberg. Just a real tough swing. Catches Loberg high in the chest. This is the 58th all-time meeting between these two. Wisconsin has only won here one time. We will go to a fifth set. Penn State fired up after the fourth. The Nittany Lion faithful has seen about 10 sets in 27 hours here this weekend inside Red Hall. We go to the fifth set, Penn State and Wisconsin, and this is what it comes down to for the Nittany Lions. In these four sets, they're hitting percentage breakdown. Yeah, and so that, to me, those numbers show resiliency. You're not playing your best volleyball in set one, and slowly you work your way out of it. And then the fourth set, you know, you have to win that one, and you elevate your level of play. So. Uh, Penn State showing why they are a championship team. Uh, they just have the tradition of playing really well uh, in critical times. So, and smart adjustments by Russ Rose on the bench as well. All right, so as we begin set five, what do you look for here and how these teams align? Well, you know, you can make some uh, matchup changes blocking hitting wise by rotating a little bit. Right now, Weiskircher looks like she is in position four. So it's rotation four. Well, let's see where she is. Nope, sorry, she is in rotation two. So she is in middle front. Wisconsin is in rotation four right now. And so Jenna Hampton begins serving for Penn State. First contact from Clark, a swing for Duello, and a kill. So as we sort that out, Audrey, what do you look for? What's the significance? So actually, Wisconsin is in rotation one. They started with the setter in right back. And so what you want to do is, you, you know, you're trying to get matchups hitting and blocking wise. And so, uh, you know, in the fifth set, you've got to make sure you've got your best hitters in the opportunity to score the most. Allison Cathy with the first point for Penn State in set five. Penn State. 
putting Kathy to swing on that left pin, super important. This all comes down to serve pass, though. I, I feel like it really doesn't um, matter if you can't control that first contact, and that includes the serve. Great serve is at Clark. Dwello. How about Horde setting up Kathy? Another back set for Dwello. Tried to go down the line, but the point to Penn State. Dwello really trying to go for somewhat of a low percentage shot. That ball is set right along that pin, so not a lot of area of the court to hit into, whereas a cross-court shot would have given her much more area to swing into. Ray has served hard all weekend. Williams scores for Wisconsin. Kelly demonstrating the concept of good set, smart set, tricky set. You don't expect her to set an A when she's bending down almost on her knees, but she does, and that really catches Penn State's block off guard. Parker with that sharp shot. Inside the 10-foot line. There's no defense there ready to play that ball. Take a look. It's perimeter. It's cross-court. It's sharp. And it's perfect. 11 kills for Johnny Parker. Does have the 10 hitting errors. Gabby Blossom in the serve. Duello. Wow, with authority. You know, I feel like we have not given Tiffany Clark, the bro for Wisconsin, enough credit. She takes that pass and delivers a perfect ball to her setter and does so much in the backcourt to keep her team in system. Kathy's blocked. Hilly and Retke for Wisconsin. You know, we got to put Dana Recchi on triple double watch as yeah. well. She's got nine blocks, eight digs, and 11 kills for the Badgers. So Johnny Parker back into the game. This Rose needing some more offense. She's a backcourt option. Thank you. Now Loberg out of the back row. Kept up by Duello. Hilly working along the length of the net. Weiskircher to the middle for Hoare. Haggerty. Kept up by Kathy. Loberg sets Haggerty. Off the block and down. Penn State even at four. What a smart free ball sent over the net by Weiskircher. She sends it right over the net so that Hilly has to play the first ball. Take a look at that. Hilly's got to play the first ball. Look at Penn State's block. Releases. Four hands over the net. What does that mean if Sydney Hilly has to take the first ball? Then How? you know it's going to be a bump set to one of the pins, and you can predict where it's going to be. Your block can release your setup, not only in the front court with your block, but your back court is in position to play around the shadow of the block. So if you're going to send over a free ball like Weisberger did, you want to take out the setter. Kathy serves off the tape. Parker. Long. Kendall White with a great dig in that rally outside of the shadow of the block. Sharp cross court. Take a look at Parker's swing here. Just a little long on that one. Very close. 
from Johnny Parker. Nia Reed is blocked. Retke's got the double-double. Retke having a great time out there. Fast closing speed to that pin. Again, 6'8", long arms, great lateral movement. That's a recipe to make a great blocker right there. She's matched a career high with 10 blocks. Four times she's done it in her career. Lober. Another swing for Nia Reed and a kill. Johnny Parker, a great defensive get on a hard line shot here. Take a look at her reaction time, super quick. Again, transition attacks right now for Penn State, looking really, really good. Set five in Happy Valley. Certainly did not disappoint last night. It's been a good start to this one. Dana Retke, she's got a dozen kills. Hilly, that's one heck of a save. One-handed set. Not just laying it up in front, laying it up behind. That's an All-American move right there by Sydney Hilly. And the All-American on the receiving end in Dana Retke, the sophomore from Riverside, Illinois. Badgers by two. Key ready. Wise Kircher again out to Reed. There's Lober. Again, that line shot at Parker, and Wisconsin's the first to eight. Now, Loberg's got such a quick arm, and she's looking cross court, then turns, hits line. Too much for Parker to handle. Badgers by three in set five. All right, so we're midway through set five here in Happy Valley. Wisconsin is up 8-5 on Penn State. And the Badgers trying to do something this program has only done one time, one win in this building at Penn State in program history back in 2002. Service error according to the line judge. A serve according to the up official. Up official said he saw the ball and he thought it landed in. He's able to overrule the line official. Let's take another look at this. See the line judge goes up with the flag. Boy, if that's an ace serve from Dana Recchi, it puts Wisconsin up by four. Yeah, it's hitting just the outer edge of the line. Another angle. Parker's certainly on that line too, perhaps a, a tough angle in that spot for the line judge. Any part of the ball that hits the line means it's in. Call is confirmed. So there is conclusive video evidence according to the down official who agrees with the up official and an ace serve for Dana Retke. That's a heck of a serve by Retke. 5-1 the scoring run for the Badgers. Good pass from White. Serena Gray gets a point back for Penn State. Kendall White in that tough situation. Her team needs her to pass the ball. She does it beautifully, calls, calls it again. Angle perfectly set up to Weiskircher. Weiskircher has many options, goes with that slide. Last night in set five, Penn State was down. 9-6 against Minnesota. Weiskircher to Parker. Dug by Dodge at the net. Weiskircher to the middle for Gray, and a kill. 
Penn State working their way into this one, making it so interesting right now. Only down by two, getting great touches on the ball, playing these ugly points a little bit better than their opponent right now. Kelly Sheffield is challenging that there was. Point Penn State, call is confirmed. There is one challenge left for Kelly Sheffield when you get that extra one in set five. 9-7, Badgers up. Weiskircher serves. Good pass from Haggerty. Set to Loberg over the top. Reed. Leith out of the back row with a kill. And here comes Penn State again. Well, Kendall White with a rally saving dig there. Unbelievable. Forearms to the ground, saving the point. That's a tough ball that she made look very easy on the dig and then gives her team an opportunity to swing for the point. That was all White's point right there. She gets greeted by her teammates and the coaching staff for that one on the sideline. And Penn State again, we just said it. This was the scenario last night against Minnesota. What does it take to battle back when you're in a fifth set like that and down? Well, I think you have to trust your teammates, number one. You've got to have confidence in them and in yourself. You've got to want to be the stud that makes the play. Kendall White's got that kind of energy out on the floor. you got great players right now, even though some young swings for Penn State, they're gutsy players and they love these moments. And on Wisconsin side of the net, they got the same type of thing, and that's why it's going to be such a great battle here in the end of this fifth. It could really go either way. I think it just comes down really to the basics, which is serve and pass. Can you put some pressure on your opponent? Can you force them out of system? And can you stay in system a little bit longer than them? 57th time these two teams have met. 27th time here in State College. Badgers only one time have got a win here. That was back in 2002. It went five sets. Wisconsin was ranked 15th. Penn State was ranked 9th. Both teams that year just to the second round of the NCAA tournament. And they're duking it out this year as top 10 teams. Tried to cut that one sharply again. The point to the Badgers. Penn State got a good touch on the block to slow it down. And then Johnny Parker really tried to get that sharp cross-court shot. Didn't score for her. Advantage right now is Wisconsin. Solid pass from Lee to Weiskircher. Clark goes to the corner. And here's the free ball. Weiskircher, out to Reed. Duello wide.
Wisconsin took set one and set three. Penn State won set four. Hampton pushes Clark deep. Loberg from the middle. Hilly Founder. Very tricky set. You do not expect that outside hitter to come in for a high middle attack. So really gutsy set there by Sidney Hilly. A smart set and a tricky set. 58 assists now for Sidney Hilly. Danielle Hart checks in again in the front row for Wisconsin. 11-9 Badgers. Hampton with a good pass, and it leads to a Serena Gray kill. She's been busy in set five. Holy moly. High-level volleyball. Great pass right here. You're able to run middle. Good distance from the net. Everything just picture perfect right now. Penn State enjoying, relishing this competition. Three of those 11 kills for Serena Gray have come in this fifth set. Emily Shore serves. Hilly again to Duello, and another hitting error. Duello has been so good tonight, but a couple errors here in set five. Right, so right now it's a race to four. We talk about the importance of running a good offense. That all starts from the pass. Again, it was 9-5 Penn State, or rather Wisconsin, after that ace serve from Dana Redke. Duello. <laughs> Kathy is blocked. T. Williams, huge block right here. So impressed with this kid. Loves, again, being the big stud for her team. Getting a huge point there. Love her style of play. Russ Rose takes a timeout. 12-11 here in set five. <laughs> this is what Big Ten volleyball is all about. And hasn't it been like this all season, this weekend included, with the way this regular season's gone? You know, and what's impressive, actually, if you think about it, is Penn State coming off a really competitive, tight five-set match against Minnesota to have the stamina, the endurance to jump as high here in this fifth set as they were in the first set takes uh, a lot of strength, and that's where conditioning comes in. So Penn State looking, um, you know, really, really good right now because uh, you would think fatigue might be setting in, but we're not seeing any signs of it right now. You made that point at the start of the night, and it was what Russ Rose said to his team at practice today. No one cares. No, no one, one cares. wants to hear the yeah. excuse. This is like the NCAA yeah. regionals. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've talked about Duello, Nia Reed. They have been the two headliners for their respective teams in terms of the kills. Duello with 24 kills, the career high previously in the teens for her, and then Nia Reed at 17, hitting around 275. Hey, coming up on BTN, Dave Revson and the gang, they'll recap the entire day of Big Ten football. The final drive presented by Auto Owners Insurance coming up next right here on BTN. Penn State had the blowout win over Maryland to get to 9-3. And, and now the volleyball squad, number seven in the country. Can they come back in set five for a second straight night for another top ten win? Audrey Flaw, Mike Monaco, our BTN crew with you from State College. Clark serves at white. Kathy! <laughs> I love the look, the confidence. She turns and looks at her team and says, let's go, this is our game. If you're just tuning in late, the freshman Allison Kathy into a more prominent role tonight, Taylor Leith tweaked something on that right leg yesterday, and they've just been riding Kathy as this match has wore off. Absolutely, and what's important to note here at 12-12, both coaches have one timeout left. There's that 
inside slide, you call it, to Redke. Bumps that hilly. Here's Haggerty. Cross court dug by Hampton. Kathy. Little tip over the top and the point to the Badgers. Little too tough to get the swing she wanted going up on the left side. Let's take another look. Yeah, just a little wide. Timeout Penn State, that's his last timeout in this fifth set. Top 10 matchup, you said it's so important when you know the selection show is tomorrow to have some confidence before you get into the postseason. Yeah, and I just think matches like this are good. And, you know, of course you want to win them, but win, lose, hey, it's competitive right to the bitter end. And your team has seen um, themselves in difficult situations. They've worked themselves out of difficult situations. Individuals have had to do that. So I think it is a great match where you see growth as a team. Now, of course, you want to come out of this one with a W, but, um, you know, this could go either way right now. It's about making very few errors, making aggressive swings at the ball. Oftentimes, it comes down to the shoulder of the left side or pin hitter. So we'll see who the setters feel are going to bring this one home for their team. Well, in addition to those pin hitters, how about the middles for both these teams tonight and what they've done? Dana Redke, one dig away from a triple-double. She's got 12 kills, 10 blocks, and nine digs. And then on the other side for Penn State, you talk about Serena Gray, who's played a big part in set five for Penn State. 11 kills, hitting 625. Johnny Parker rotated in. A little bit more offense when she's back there. Of course, back court. 13 12 Wisconsin with Dwello serving. Service error. Hey, I'm going to give that point to Russ Rose. A great time for a, a timeout. Icing the server for Wisconsin. So nice coaching move there by Penn State. Eight service errors from Wisconsin for the match. A lot of trust being shown in Allison Kathy. She serves. Recky on the slide. I take a look at this. What you can do with a great pass, even Four hands in front of her, Rick, he delivers. Match point for Wisconsin. Weiskircher to Reed. Point for Penn State off the touch. Strong swing. I love the slow motion plays. You can just see the force that the ball is being hit with. And the White served it at Haggerty. Lee bumps it up to Reed. Reed again, big swing. Near the net, point, Nittany Lions. Reed does a great job of managing that first set that was a little too tight. Tips it into the block. She knows that her team is going to be there to play it up and then gets that swing on the second attempt. Huge play there by Nia Reed. Timeout, Kelly Sheffield. Here's this last play one more time. All right, let's take a look. Not a great set, Nia Reed tips it into the block, trusts that her team is going to be there. And then on the second attempt, swings a cannonball over the net. And the defense for Wisconsin with an overpass results in that point for Penn State. 
It was a great dig by Tiffany Clark in the back for Wisconsin, but Penn State has gone from Wisconsin having match point to the Nittany Lions having match point and a chance for two massive wins at home on the final weekend. Hey, you're absolutely right. This would be huge for Penn State, but hey, don't count Wisconsin out. They need to get a good pass here, a good swing. They've shown great side out offense here. They play with a ton of confidence. Hilly knows exactly what she wants to do with the ball. We'll take a look at who their front row is, who you think uh, she's going to go to here. The last 13 times that these two teams have played in this building, it's been Penn State getting the win. Yeah. They're trying to make it 14 in a row and hold Wisconsin empty here once again. Red key, front court, Hilly front court, Loberg front court. Kendall White. Recky on the slide and an answer for Wisconsin to get to 15 all. Molly Haggerty has been pretty darn good passing on serve received on that one. When the game is on the line, instead of being tense, she's loose. A big serve for Dana Recky. Leith with a good pass to Weiskircher. Here's Nia Ree, dug by Dodge. Close to the net, Weiskircher, and the point to Wisconsin. Oh, Weiskircher wanted that so badly. That ball's trickling at the net. It would have been an amazing overpass kill, but a net violation. Advantage Wisconsin on that error. Recky serves. On the overpass, Williams, point Penn State. Will Wisconsin challenge? They do have a challenge left. You get the extra one when you go to the fifth set. And Kelly Sheffield will use it. He's challenging the ball being in along the sideline. Well, it would take a lot to overrule that and give the match to Wisconsin. So let's see where that ball lands. Kendall White blocking the angle there for us a little bit. Crowd here reacts to the replays they see. And I think it's so fitting that they're playing Rocky theme music here because this has been <laughs> a, a knockout, drag out fight between these two teams. About three hours from Philadelphia. <laughs> Down official does have access to one camera angle we don't have. After we go through the angles that we have seen. And again, Wisconsin challenging. Another look. You need conclusive video evidence. Call stands. So not confirmed, but it stands a hitting error on Williams, 16 all. Yeah, so I think it's really important to stay calm in the heat of the battle here. So the call didn't go your way, regroup. Game to two, refocus, recharge here. Need to string together a couple good plays. A couple Badger teammates go pick up Tiana Williams. Kelly Sheffield's team locked in a classic. Now for some reason, the down official is again looking at the video. Okay. And now we're ready to resume. Weiskircher serving. Haggerty 
Tyrese pass this time for Tilly to bump set. Weiskircher to Nia Reed exploding into the kill. Match point again on the way for the Nittany Lions. Tentative swing from Loberg results in an easy dig and a transition bomb sent over by Nia Reed. You've got to have confidence. You've got to swing to win. Roll shots aren't going to work. These last 27 hours have felt like postseason volleyball. Second match point for Penn State. Loeber kept up by Dodge. Good coverage. And then Hilly steps forward for Wisconsin. Wow. Hilly just saved the match for her team. Just an odd sort of play. She just has the wherewithal to jump, swing. Wow, what a great heads up play by Sydney Hilly. You talk about being tentative, that is anything but right, by that's Sydney Hilly. Exactly what you want in that critical situation. Both setters have done so. Hilly, the one to get the better of it. 17 all. Weiskircher to Nia Reed. Once again. Nia Reed has been big time for Penn State, but now she's on the bench. Who is going to be the go-to for Penn State? If you're Wisconsin, you got to like the fact that Reed is on the bench, so you have to play with a little bit of confidence now. We've got good swings as well. They just need a good pass. Wisconsin, huge pass right now. Penn State trailed two sets to one. They trailed by four in set five, and now Williams answers back. So she atones for that hitting error, and it's 18 all. And Tiffany Clark, wow. The junior throw for Wisconsin lines up perfectly. Look at that beautiful angle on her forearms. Loberg serves. White stepped in front. That's tight for Weiskircher. Sets the middle of the tray. But when the ball is passed tight, you set and you trust that your middle is going to go up. Wow. Four kills for Serena Gray in set five. And now she serves on match point. The freshman with the service error. And look who has rotated in for Wisconsin. Number 16, Dana Redke. She's got a lot of touches on the block, got a lot of stuff blocks. Her team needs her to block right now for point. Clark to the corner. Weiskircher right near the net. Point Badgers. It's a great save. Nobody getting that ball. Kendall White playing the first contact. Everybody thought she was going to bump set it, but she had played the first contact. The third match point for Wisconsin. Parker. Wisconsin in five sets wins in Rec Hall. A Wisconsin amazing display of competitive spirit, believing in themselves. Hilly saving, I think, that entire fifth set with that heads up swing. But a great team effort all around. Wisconsin showing why they're in the top 10 in the nation. Unbelievable plays by them tonight. <laughs> what a competitive match. Just the second ever win at Rec Hall for this program. And it comes 16 years after Wisconsin won in five sets here against Penn State. 21-19 in set five. Wow, what a match here tonight.